Hi, I'm Joe from SelfSufficientPath.com. I was at one of the, uh, the big box hardware stores the other day, and I was looking for some deer and rabbit repellent. And what I found was for one gallon, the cost was $27. I thought, well, okay, that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Let me see what's in this. So I started looking at the active ingredients. And basically, less than 2% of it was uh, fermented eggs. Um, less than 1% of it was garlic. And that was pretty much, there were some other active ingredients, but you're talking about, you know, less than half a percent at that point. So it was clear that the, the eggs and the garlic were the active ingredients that, were, that you were really counting on. Um, and everything else, you know, 96% plus, um, was the substrate, you know, water, be it water, oil, um, maybe some milk, um, you know, and basically the purpose of the substrate is to keep the material on the plants. The purpose of the active ingredients is to pre uh, produce a, an unpleasant smell to the animal. And I'm like, well, I can do this, and I can certainly do it for less than $27 a gallon. So that's what I'm going to be doing together, putting together a spray um, that we're going to put on our plants, and then we're going to see later how it works. I'll put that in the comments. So here we are back behind the shop um, in kind of a little area that I've built with a picnic table and such. And you can see this is an azalea I put in last fall. Um, the deer have pretty much stripped all the leaves off. Actually, they had stripped it all the way down to, to where the leaf line was, to where the leaf litter was over these leaves. And I've, I've uh, taken that leaf litter off to give this, chance, this plant an opportunity um, to come back. But, so that's an azalea. We've got a rhododendron up here that they've basically done the same thing to. They've taken all the top off of it. Um, but what really irritates me is my apple tree. So you can see there's getting to be a little bit of growth here, but basically they've nipped the ends of each of these branches off. And the tree's going to survive. I'm, I'm pretty sure the tree's going to survive. But it's, it's not a happy little tree at this point. Um, it's seen better days. So we got to do something about this. Okay, first things first, doesn't it? Now we'll put a little water in it to let it uh, give it a thinner consistency once we've blended it. Let's see if we can do this without making a giant mess. Hi. about right. Next, the garlic. So there's no point in me making you sit here and watch me clean uh, ten, 10 bulbs of garlic. So I'm just going to do that and I'll show you the result. Now when it comes to the garlic, it doesn't have to be really clean. <clears throat> you look here, if you get a little bit of skin in it or something like that, it's not going to matter. We're going to strain it out later. Um, but one thing I found you can't do is put the garlic in there, put the water in there, and start the, the motor. The cloves of garlic settle down around the blade and basically gum it up, won't let it turn. So what we're going to try to do is start it and then drop it in. And finally, we've got seven chili peppers. Um, so this should heat things up a bit. Whew. If I were deer, I wouldn't want anywhere near this stuff either. Wow. 
And finally, about three quarters of a cup of oil. A little bit of dish liquid, I'm not going to get too particular. And about three quarters of a cup of milk. These last three ingredients really don't do much for the smell. The milk might add a little bit to it, but they're really just to um, to help give it stickiness, to help keep it stick to the plants through weather. And we're going to add water until we've got a total volume of about three gallons. And finally, we've got all of our ingredients in here. We're just going to take a paint stirrer and give it a good blend. So finally, as I chopped everything in the blender, I think that's about all it's going to take. It looks very well blended. Um, so basically, this is a, uh, an amalgamation of a lot of recipes I pulled off of the internet. Um, you know, some of them were more concentrated, had this ingredient instead of that ingredient. Um, but these are the ingredients that they all pretty much had in common. Um, what I'll do next, and I'll, I'll strain this uh, into a different bucket. I, I, there's no point in uh, showing you that. You strain it through an oil strainer or through a uh, t-shirt or something into another bucket. Basically, you're just trying to get everything out of it that, uh, that could clog up your sprayer. And for, I'll, I'll run the cost of this and put it in the show notes, but for the cost of this, um, the delta between that and what a gallon of it would have cost me in the store. I can make this, buy a separate sprayer specifically for this, and still be spending half the money um, that I would have spent for, you know, a gallon of this. Now, will it work? Um, I think so. We'll find out, and I'll let you know later. So if you like this kind of thing, um, if you're into self-sufficiency and homesteading, uh, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, we do this sort of thing all the time, and we'd love to have you.